What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, and this is my top 10 favorite Decemberist songs. Uh, these are songs that are only on their officially released studio CDs. Uh, there's nothing from the EPs, though if I were doing the EPs, there would definitely be a couple songs from EPs on here. Might do that later. Uh, but anyways, yeah, these are just my 10 favorite songs. 10 to 1, I'll put the list on the screen when I'm done, and I will put a link in the comments to my Spotify playlist if you want to check out these 10 songs yourself. Uh, my number 10 of What a Terrible World, What a Beautiful World, Lake Song. Um, I kind of don't know why I like this song. Like, I don't think the lyrics are his best lyrics. They're kind of, there's a reminiscent quality about this. There's like this nostalgia quality about this. Um, I don't think musically, this is by far their most, they do things that are a little more interesting. But the feeling that this song gives me, I grew up near water, uh, grew up on a beach community, went down to the beach, like, I grew up in the 70s. My sister and I, when we were like preteens, would go to the beach by ourselves. Um, spent a lot of times near water, near lakes. There is something about this song that evokes that memory of like evenings by water. And there's a nostalgic quality about it. There's just this, this piece to this song that, I don't know, connects with me. Like, I don't think the lyrics... I don't know, there's nothing like that jumps out about this song that like on an objective level, like they did this for the first time, they're doing this for the first time or like anything like that. It's just, the vibe just gets me. It's just mm, right there. That's where my heart is right there. It gets me right there in the heart. So Lake Song, number 10, for that reason. It just, I don't know, it, it connects with me. I, I got you, Malloy, I got you. Uh, number nine, the Mariner's Revenge song, which I almost didn't put on this list because I, when I first was got into Decemberist, for some reason I thought of this as somewhat of like a, a gimmicky song, like a novelty song. And then over the years, just appreciating the sheer genius of this. It's a really long song. I think it's close to nine minutes. It's about, if you don't know it, the lyrics are fantastic. It's very much a taverny, sea shanty, folky type. A lot of accordion action in this. Um, it's about a a boy whose mother is taken advantage of by like a rake and a rustabout, a scoundrel. And when the boy grows up, he vows to get revenge. And it's the way he goes about. It's the way he ends up getting revenge and sort of the twist that the song nonetheless gives away in the very first line or the very first couplet or the very first verse that you kind of forget about over the course of the journey. And then when you get back to it at the end and you realize how revenge is gonna be like exacted, you're just like, oh, that's a good song, man. And it's just executed well. Malloy's got the perfect voice for this. It's just, it's a master craft in storytelling, just absolute expertise right here. Uh, my number nine. Uh, number eight is the Rake song. Might be the same Rake, except it can't be the same Rake because they both die, I think. And I don't think the Rake from this Rake song, Hazards of Love, had time enough to do what he did in the other one, the Mariner's Revenge song. But this is about, uh, it uh, happens in the middle of Hazards of Love. We introduce a new character, this Rake, who's in charge of like breaking up his couple because the queen doesn't want his son with this woman. Um, and he just kind of tells about how he has like exploited other women and even like infanticide, like killed their children and the ways in which he does it in really graphic, disturbing ways. Uh, but the music is all like, dun -dun 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 -dun, and the drums come in like, Ch -ch -ch. it's just this really stark, simple, driving, dark, catchy as F song. It just absolutely amazing. And it kind of drops right in the middle of Hazards of Love. And it's sort of this just kind of standalone, almost like like you have the first half, the rake song, and then the second half. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, great, great, great song. Uh, number seven, Shankill Butchers. Darkness in the form of a nice, simple, little acoustic ballad. Um, Shankill Butchers are real people. Uh, Northern Ireland, late 70s, they would literally just butcher people to death. And what makes this so song so powerful? I think it's the second verse. After Malloy has warned us to like, you know, lock your children up at night, not let them get out because the Shanko butchers might get them. He like kind of turns the tables on us and was like, hey, these were once sweet little boys too. Like something went horribly wrong in their life. Like I know they're horrible people now, but they were once like, 
let's remember these were once you know our neighbors um in literally in the sense of like you know northern ireland and their history you know i i don't know much about the shane kill butchers i've never like gone deep dive into them um yes they butcher people they were horrible people right anybody who kills people but for him to like, let's look for the humanity in them and look for the source for why we created this. That's a Malloy ploy, a Malloy ploy. It's it's absolutely beautiful. It's dark. It almost sounds like a children's lullaby, but then you listen to the lyrics, you're like, oh no, this is some messed up stuff. Uh, from the Crane Wife. It's just a, it, the Decemberist again, just perfection. Number six, Odalisk off their Cutaways and Cutouts, their first Cutaways and Cutouts? Cutaways and Cutouts. Is that what it's called? Um, off their first album. This is their first like sort of like getting dark type moment. It's a couple like tempo shifts. Starts off kind of a, you know, kind of your like folky, but with like this dark brooding waltz energy. And then we kind of shift tones a couple times. Um, this is the first sort of them kind of prior to this on the album, the songs are also dark. You have a a three month old, three hour old baby. How long that is that baby? A three hour old baby ghost in the first song. But this one is the first time where the music explicitly matches sort of the dark intensity of the lyrics. And Odalisk is like a, a, a harem woman or a woman who's just enslaved in some way. Um, the lyrics are not too explicit. They're very, they're not generic, but they're also more poetically painting a picture about how we're going to free her and what's going to happen. Uh, but the music, lends itself that darkness and it kind of develops nicely over the course of like the music is very intense intensifies over the course of the song um there's a little melody in here that reminds me of oasis um but in a good way so uh yeah great song off their first album uh number five uh the bag man's gambit off picaresque um i think this is a screenplay for a movie that needs to be made um my understanding of the story, and I'm, I'm not really good at understanding stories sometimes, um, at least lyric-wise, because once I'm like convinced that the story is this, I ignore other things that may fill me into it. But my interpretation of this story is it's a, it's a love. It's like this love relationship, this like furtive, like nobody knows. I've always pictured it as two males. Um, that's the way I always pictured it. Um, fall in love. One of them's a spy. One of them is finding secrets for this spy, kind of feeding them information. Um, this spy gets in trouble a number of times over the course of the song. One time he sees him on TV, um, but then he kind of disappears, the spy that this guy's in love with. Um, and then the very, after this like massive buildup where the music gets chaotic and stuff, uh, the very last part of it, I guess it's the last verse, um, this person 10 years later sees their former lover who they thought had maybe just disappeared or been vanished or been, you know, who knows what happens to spies, sees them riding in an automobile, like down the street, and he kind of waves and then he's gone forever. Just great, great cinematic ending. But the music is this just awesome, dun, dun, just really cool acoustic vibe, kind of builds in the courses, um, very defiant courses. Uh, they cannot stop me now. Um, great, just ask. Amazing song, amazing story on an album full of amazing stories. The Bagman's Gabbit of Picaresque. Number four, Los Angeles, I'm Yours. Off their second album, uh, Nothing But Insults, a series of insults about horrible Los Angeles is with sort of the course. It's like, hey, but I'm yours, Los Angeles. I grew up in L.A., Every time I go home, I complain about the traffic. I complain about the number of people. I complain about the smog. I complain about the prices. I complain about the fact that you can't park anywhere without valet parking. I complain all the time about Los Angeles, but I will forever love it because I was born and raised there. And the line, an ocean's garbled vomit washed upon the shore, might be one of the greatest lyrics. That should be on the sign when you enter LA County. It should say, Los Angeles, an ocean's garbled vomit washed upon the shore. That should be what it says. They should adopt this and own it. But it's just a great acoustic song. It's got some Stevie Wonder harmonica that drops in that just like ups it a level towards the end. Absolutely amazing. Number three, uh, another one about lovers in like not the best situation on the bus mall, which to me is just heartstring tugging, heartstring tugging, heartstring tugging. It's about two people. 
Uh, I think one of them at one point comes out to their family and their family like ostracizes him. And so this person becomes like a runaway and becomes homeless, meets this other homeless runaway. They're, they're turning tricks. They're making money in, in dark alleys and rich people's on rich people's beds. Um, you know, the limp dicks and cr quick tricks. It's not a very good life. Uh, but at the end of the day, at the end of the night, these two people have each other. Um, there's a moment where I think they're huddled in like a telephone booth and it's freezing cold. Um, it's just them trying to make it through this dark, dark world. And it's just, I don't know, I just, the, the Malloy's ability to deliver the lyrics with so much like compassion and emotion and feeling and the way he writes them and the pictures he's painted and just his wordplay. Uh, this is just a master class in, in songwriting. Uh, this song just absolutely blows me away. Just absolutely fantastic on the bus mall. Uh, number two, The Hazards of Love 4, The Drowned, the last song on the Hazards of Love album. Um, spoiler alert, uh, this is a concept album. Uh, the queen is trying not to let her son fall in love with this woman. Her son's a shapeshifter. At the end of it, they try to escape across this river, but things happen and they're going to drown. The water is lapping over the sides of their boat and the the male the son is singing this song to to the girl they know they're going to drown they know this is it but it's okay because they're together and it's just it's just one of the hazards of love is that your mom may want to kill you and you may drown but if you're in the arms of the person you love then you know isn't it all okay um and just trying to find the lyrics for this because there is a lot. It just, it tugs at my heart so much. I think it is just so beautiful. It's so heartbreaking. Like, I don't want to die. I'm, I'm not looking to die. And I definitely don't want to drown. Uh, but, you know, there's something really incredibly just romantic about this. And in the melody, it's just the, it's a beautiful melody. Malloy delivers it incredibly. Um, but this, this is, I think, the, the last verse. Let's be married here today these rushing waves to bear our witness and we will lie like river stones rolling only where it takes us like just embracing the fact that that's how this is going to end uh the hazards of love um yeah it's just a heartbreaking margaret array the rocks around the hull before we're sinking a million stones a million bones a million holes within the chink ah uh, just it's just it's absolutely fantastic absolutely amazing song uh, just heartbreaking. Uh, but yeah, so beautiful. Last song. I think one of the best song and album ending songs in the history of album ending songs. Absolutely hits it out of the ballpark. And my number one song, my favorite December song, the title track to The Crane Wife, The Crane Wife, number one and number two, because they're together. If the two of them were separate. If the Crane 1 was a separate track and the Crane 2 was a separate track, the Crane 1 would occupy this spot. The Crane 2 would not be on this list. However, the Crane 1 is such a perfect song to these ears that the Crane 2 can write it all the way to the number one spot. The Crane 1 is just that the guitar part is just this kind of low key driving type energy the the way that that Colin writes these lyrics just the the slight repetition that's used throughout the way the song kind of builds in its momentum before it goes into a little slightly weirder like more proggy folk crane two and then the absolutely beautiful more like traditionally folk crane three which opens the album this is like the penultimate song um but the crane one this is just perfect it's just such a perfect and really it is the crane wife one that is the thing that's lifting this to here though over the years i've i have come to love the crane wife too as much because it's it's always there with the crane one i just can't avoid it but yeah that's what they look like uh i'm going to put a playlist together on spotify the link will be in the description if you want to check it out it will be in this order so yeah, you get to start off with the Crane Wife one, and then you get a really depressing love song, and then you get a heartbreaking song. So yeah, I think I'll leave it in this order. Should I leave it in this order? I don't know. I might mix it up. I might have two of them. Who knows? But I don't know. Anyways, that's it. Um, yeah, if you watched it and you made it this far, let me know your favorite December songs. Let me know which ones I missed. You know how comments work. Drop comments whether you want, you know. All right. But that's all I got. Thanks for watching. I highly, highly, highly recommend if you're not familiar with the uh, Decemberist, Maybe check out my playlist. Maybe get, get, 
find a way to get into them because I think it is very, very, the payoff is pretty good. They are a really fantastic band, but I, I just wish more people would love because they're really good. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Peace. Subscribe, like, share, comment, do all those things, and talk to you later.